Hello again, everybody. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be walking you through how I import my images into Lightroom Classic. Some of the topics we'll be covering is how to use previews as you import, how to leverage collections, how to automatically import your files to a second storage location as a means of backing up, how to rename your files, and setting up your metadata as you import your images as well. So let's get to it. Alright, here we are in Lightroom and I'm on the library module so that I can come down here in the lower left corner and click on the import button to begin that process. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a click and immediately it's going to jump me into the import dialog screen, setup screen, however you want to frame it. And immediately it searches through my source storage location to identify any new images that haven't been imported into Lightroom previously. So let's start over on the left hand side of the screen here and you can see this source section. So this is where I'm telling Lightroom, this is where my images that I want to import are located. So all you would have to do if this isn't set up correctly is either jump down to your local disk or wherever your card reader might be attached, whether it's USB or you've got a slot built directly into your laptop like I have here, or if you had an external drive connected as well. So let's say I had images on my local internal storage that I wanted to go to, I would just come up. Same concept if it was on this external hard drive. But again, for my case, I've got an SD card inserted into the slot, so it's already pulling from the proper location and I'm good to go. So you can see I've got some test shots on here that I was doing a few weeks ago, just playing around in the yard with the dog. But if I wanted to, I could also click on all photos here and it's going to pull up any image that's on that SD card or on that source uh, location and pull them into the import dialog. Now you can notice that these are grayed out. If we were to come up to file handling, there's a reason that those older images are grayed out. And that's because by default, I have Lightroom set to not import suspected duplicates. If I were to untick this box, you can see suddenly all of these images are no longer grayed out and they've got individual check marks indicating that they're selected for import. I don't want to re-import any of these images because I've already got them in my catalog. So I'm going to tick that box again. And then just walking through this point by point here, you've got a few different options as you go down this list. So the first one you come across is building your previews. And by default, mine is on standard. But if you click into this menu, you'll see that you've got a few different options. You can go with minimal, embedded, and sidecar. Again, the standard option that I've already got selected or one-to-one. -one. So let's run through those really quickly just to give you a, a brief overview of what each of those does for you. Minimal is really if you're just looking to import your images literally as quickly as, as you possibly can into Lightroom and not worry about the quality of the preview images that you're going to be seeing within your library module. It's really intended strictly for a quick import. The files are so compressed and low resolution that they're really not terribly useful for reviewing your images. The next one down is embedded in Sidecar and that's essentially pulling in the JPEG preview that is embedded in a RAW file. So if you're shooting in RAW, which I highly recommend if you're using Lightroom, uh, but if you are, most cameras are gonna embed a JPEG preview of the image into the RAW file. That helps Lightroom and other programs access the preliminary JPEG data more quickly than it can render the raw information on screen. But again, this is really gonna only be giving you a, uh, a representation of what the image looks like per the camera settings for JPEG. A little bit more useful than minimal, but not necessarily what I'm personally looking for as I import my images. So the next option down is the one I've got selected and that I typically use, which is standard previews. It's good for previewing images in library. It's more accurate than the prior two options. So so I use standard that's gonna give me the most accurate representation of the data without going to the last option, which is a one-to-one -one preview. The advantage of one-to-one -one preview is it's a much larger file size and you can zoom into 100%. There's no delay in terms of the file loading or anything like that. Of course, the downside is it's a larger file, which means it's gonna take up more space. If you do decide that you wanna use one-to-one -one previews, keep in mind that within your catalog settings, you do have the ability to set the default time at which one-to-one -one previews are discarded. So the default is 30 days, you can set that longer or shorter, at which point Lightroom will discard that one-to-one -one preview. And if you go back into the image, it's gonna to have to regenerate the preview as you're using it. So again, I preferred standard. It's a good medium ground between performance and quality of image. The next thing that I always do as I import is I build smart previews. And there's a couple different reasons for that. So first and foremost, I sync all of my files into the Adobe Creative Cloud. The main reason I do that is I like to have access to my files through the Lightroom mobile app on my phone. It's not critical 
article. I'm not usually sharing from there for social media and certainly not to my website or anything. But if I want to show people or send something out to say a friend to get some feedback on an edit I'm working or whatever, I just find it convenient to have it synced in there and be able to access it. The other reason I use Smart Previews is it helps speed up the performance of Lightroom as you're editing. So a Smart Preview is essentially a high quality but highly compressed version of your image. When you create a Smart Preview, Lightroom is going through and creating an image that's maxed out at 2,540 pixels on the longest edge of the image. So again, you've got good quality, but it is a much smaller file size and image size than if you're working with the raw file directly within the develop module. And that's gonna help speed up as you apply your edits, especially as you get into more complicated processing with multiple local adjustments and sharpening, noise reduction, et cetera, et cetera. So again, I like to do the smart previews for a couple different reasons. A, I've got the access on the Adobe Cloud and through the mobile app, and then also it helps speed up the performance of Lightroom as I'm actively working on an image in the develop module. The next option we've got here is make a second copy too. And this is something else that especially when I'm out traveling and I'm offloading files from my memory card, either after each outing or at the end of the trip, I'm doing everything I can to back up my data as best I can while I'm out in the field. So saying I'm gonna upload it to my backup via Backblaze into the cloud is not necessarily gonna be a viable option. But what I can do is automatically tell Lightroom that as I'm importing my files from my SD card, I don't wanna just go to one location, I wanna to go to two. So in my case, I have my external solid state drive or SSD attached via USB-C and I'm telling Lightroom that I want to import to that as my default. And if you look up at the top right here, you can see extreme SSD on my E drive. That's my external drive that I've got attached where I keep all of my raw images. But when I first initially import, I also make a second copy to my internal drive on my laptop and I create a subfolder within that so I can keep those organized. And I generally keep those for 30 to 60 days, it just kind of depends. I don't have a real hard and fast rule around that, but the main key is that when I'm initially importing, I'm automatically creating two additional locations where my files are stored. And then if you look in the upper middle of the screen here, I've got it set to copy. So I'm not actually removing files from the SD card, I'm copying files from the SD card. So if I were to have a drive failure, either on my internal drive, my external hard drive, or my SD card, I've now got those files in three different locations, greatly minimizing my risk of loss of data i.e. losing all the images I just spent time and, and you know, maybe not have an opportunity to go back and recapture at a later date. So if I come in here and click on this specific option for making a second copy, when you click into it, it's gonna open a dialog. And you can see that for this particular instance, I've got the images going onto my internal drive. And since I'm on a Windows machine and I'm subscribed to OneDrive, I've actually got another layer of backup that'll happen when I'm back on a reliable internet connection. So I have this under my OneDrive folder. It's stored locally on the C drive and it's gonna upload to OneDrive. And then you can see I've just got my file structure, temp photo backup, the year, and then the particular shoot. So in this case, you can see I've already imported some images in my little stay at home collection I've got here. But if I were to click on this again, I can create another, and I'm just gonna import these new images here as well. And uh, again, for the sake of example, drop them in here. So you would just select folder, Again, all of my older images that I've already imported are still grayed out. So if I wanna exclude those in my visibility, again, in the upper middle here, I had clicked on all photos earlier so that I could show you these images, but now I'm just gonna click on new photos and that's going to just show me the ones that are gonna get imported on this sweep. The other thing I do since I upload all of my images to the Adobe Cloud is I create a collection or add my images to a collection as I import. And within Lightroom Classic, only the images that are in a collection are actually gonna get synced up to the cloud. So I'm gonna go in tick that and you can see how I've got everything structured here. Some of these older ones are examples of before I really got into organizing my images in a better fashion. But if you come down, you can see that over the last several years, I've been going year by year. What I do is I have a parent collection for the current year, and then I create collections within those or sub collections for each of the individual shoots I've got going on. So again, on this one, I've already have one created. If I didn't, I would just come up here to the plus button. I can name it, let's say 2020 dog photos. I can put it inside of my 2020 collection set, so that's all ready to go. I could also set this as a target collection so that anytime I import in the future, at least until I change this again, this would be the default option that's selected as I come in with import. And then I can tell it right here as well whether I want that collection synced with Lightroom or not. So let's go in and create this, uh, this new collection here. So we'll hit that. Now on the right, you can see that there's now a collection for 2020 dog photos. Okay, so that's pretty much got us ready to go in terms of the file handling. So let me click on that header and collapse that back down. 
down. And one thing you may notice on here is that your import screen may not have these sections collapsed down. They may all be expanded. If you haven't had a chance to yet, you can watch my customizing Lightroom workspace video. But what I've got here is solo mode turned on so that only the section I'm working in is gonna stay open. So if I collapse these back down by using right click and collapse all, now as I go from section to section, only the section I'm working in is gonna be open and the other ones automatically close as I click away from them. So the next section to come into is file renaming. You don't have to do this, but again, from an organizational standpoint, I always rename my files so I have this box ticked. And I've got a custom template set up here so that as I import, it's taking a custom text and combining combining it with the file name and the date the image was taken. So in this particular case, if you wanted to set that up for yourself, you would just click on this drop down menu and you can edit any of the existing ones that Adobe already has in here. Or as you can see, I have some other custom ones created in here, but where I've landed is I want custom text, which is generally I'm gonna name it what the shoot was. So in this case, dog photos or Yosemite Glacier National Park, whatever the case may be. And then it's gonna be the original file name from the camera, as well as the original date of when the, uh, when the shot was taken. If I wanted to edit any of these, you could just click edit and go into that. So again, I'm going to use this custom text. So I'm going to come down to the next field and I'm just going to put dog photos. So now again, as it imports, it's going to automatically rename my images with this custom text structure. So dog photos, file name, and then the date. Extensions, I just leave as is. I'm not going to worry about that. Now, if I come down to apply during import, I don't use any develop settings when I import, and this does get people hung up from time to time. I'll see posts on forums or on Reddit where people are asking, I'm importing my images, and as soon as I import them, they look terribly different than what they did on the import screen. Oftentimes, it's because they've selected a develop setting here, and maybe they've got different presets that they've created or anything like that, and it's altering the image in the process of actually importing it. I don't want any automation around that kind of stuff, so I'm just gonna come in here and leave that at none. So the other thing you have here on your metadata field is your copyright. Yours may be set to none. Again, I always apply copyright, so that's already pre-selected. If I were to come in here and hit edit presets, you can set your copyright info and all of that as you need it as you import your images into Lightroom. And then the last piece under apply during import is setting up your keywords. So this is where in a very broad brush stroke, I'm gonna start using keywords to help me search for and organize my photos down the line. So just very broadly speaking, these are shots of a dog. These are outside. If these were images from a photo trip, I'd probably put the location, whether it be Wyoming or Yosemite or whatever the case may be. So whatever you want to put here, you certainly can. You could even you know, get as granular as the type of weather it was, so on and so forth. So anything you'd want to do that would broadly apply to all of the images, you can apply here in the keywords box. So I've got that set. And the last step is setting the primary destination. So up above, we told Lightroom that we wanna make a second copy to a certain location, but now we need to also make sure that we've got the primary location set correctly. So the way I do this, I don't put anything into subfolders. I organize everything into one folder. And I mentioned earlier that I keep all of my raw files on my external drive. So I've got that selected here, my extreme SSD. It shows you how much space you have remaining out of its capacity. And again, for me, I've already done some imports here, so it's got pre-selected on the last thing I used. If I needed to create a new folder, I would just hit the plus sign up here and come to the create new folder option, at which point it's gonna take you into your OS file system dialog. And I could come up here and say, you know what? I do want this under 2020, but instead of under stay at home, I actually want this folder to be called something else. So let's say we're just gonna call it 2020 dog photos. I'm gonna select that folder, hit the select folder button, and again, now you can see that it's automatically added that folder in to my file structure. And I've got that selected. If I turn solo mode back on here real quickly and collapse all of these down, I can jump back up to the top. And this again is where I told Lightroom where I want those secondary copies imported to. And down under the destination portion is where I'm telling it, where do I want my primary version of the images copied to? So that's really all there is to it. Once I've got everything set here the way I want it, I'm just gonna come down here, hit the import button. And because of everything we've done, it's going to automatically build standard previews for me. It's going to build smart previews. I'm not importing suspected duplicates. I'm making a second copy to my internal drive. I've told it what collection I want it to be put into. I've set up my file renaming, so dog photos, file name, and date. 
During the import, I'm not applying any develop settings, but I am having my copyright added to it. I've also added in some, again, generic broad stroke keywords to help me find images further down the line. And then lastly, I've told it where I want the primary import location to be, which again, for me is my external drive. And I've created a new folder to drop these into. So at this point, I'm just gonna hit import and let Lightroom do its thing. Okay, so now that the import is all complete, I'm back here in the library module. And if I come over to the catalog section, you'll see right away that Lightroom already has my previous import selected for me. So I can see I have 111 images that I just imported and they're all exactly where I would expect them to be. If I hover on one of these, you'll also see that the file has been renamed as I asked Lightroom to do within the import dialog screen. So dog photos dash file name and then the date. If I come down to my folders, I'll see here's my 2020 dog photos, all 111 images. And then also if I jump into my collections, I also have my 2020 dog photos collection, which will sync up to the Adobe Cloud. And again, all 111 images and I'm all set and ready to go. All right, so there you have it. That's really all there is to it. It's not terribly complicated, but if you don't understand what all those different options can do for you, there can be some confusion and you may miss some valuable steps like that duplicating your import into a second location renaming your images to help you stay organized and so on and so forth. As always, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you know when new videos are released in the coming weeks and months. Take care, everybody.